A art. Nice. I art? Uh, sometimes, you know, when I got a little bit of free time. AI art. Interesting. Is AI art art? No. Well, there's the word art is in there. It's not really surprising to see uh, AI algorithms being used in the art world. You know, we've had this technology for a while. It's not the shit that you see on Twitter is not the first time that this has been done. You know, we have shit like AI dungeon, uh, things writing for you. We've got AI rappers. Ugh. What is being done with these programs is really not that hard to like conceptualize. Sure, the code is very complicated, but what's actually being achieved is pretty straightforward. You're basically giving a robot like a bunch of Lego bricks that you've picked out and then feeding it a bunch of models that various artists have, uh, Lego artists have created with those exact bricks and then the robot sort of builds you like a median model based on all of that input. So, uh, cool. What could we use this tool for? So when AI art generation really started popping off on Twitter, you know, it was mostly these funny Dali mini drawings, now it's called Crayon, where basically you can type in a prompt, you know, you can type in like Peter Griffin, Evangelion, hitting, hitting the gritty, and then it would sort of try to approximate a little 9x9 nine nine square of what that might look like. As the tech improved though, people figured out something you could do with it. You could put in your prompts to have the art in the style of a certain artist, a human artist that actually exists. So basically then what we had is the AI generating like a scuffed version of something that artist A, B, or C could potentially make. So I'm sure the more discerning in the audience already have alarm bells going off in their head, but for now, let's talk about what this tool can be used for ethically and honestly effectively. So when you're at the beginning of a big ass project, like a game or a movie, animation, whatever, there's a uh, part of production called pre-production at the very beginning, as you can imagine. One of the main things that you're going to do in this It's time to take estrogen. One of the things that you're going to be doing in pre-production is creating some assets to help you figure out how your project is going to look or sound or feel, etc. People create concept art as a sort of palette to work off of when you're going into production um, so you have a better idea of how things are going to kind of be. This is uh, super clear in retro video games. You know, the reason that Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask have really sick-ass concept art is because they needed that to look at while they were trying to make the cardboard-looking-ass N64 graphics match, you know, what it was supposed to look like. And since art is collaborative, even when you're working alone, because you always carry all the art that has affected you with you, um, this is where your art can start to add influence from yours and other people's work. So sticking with Zelda, uh, when they were making Ocarina of Time, they wanted Link to sort of look like a 90s heartthrob hero, and they sort of based his look off Leonardo DiCaprio, like Titanic era, 90s era, you know, I'm gonna have to fight Tyler the Creator over him era, Leo. I love the creator! <laughs> So they had the concept artist take that into account, and that influence, you know, got added into the art. And this stage is where AI art generation um, can be used to actually help out moving into these concept art pieces. So for instance, when we're doing pre-production for Ocarina of Time, you know, the team could have fed prompts into an AI art program, you know, like Leo DiCaprio, Forest Elf. Green Tunic, Peter Pan, Blonde, and you can get some rough images to see how this concept they're working on starts to look. The important part here is that the AI is not making the art, it is setting the groundwork, basically doing like a mood board for you to sort of work off of. Another example would be Silent Hill 2. Um, the artists for that game took inspiration from the painter Francis Bacon. So let's say, you know, they're working on concepts for the nightmare version of Brookhaven Hospital, the Otherworld Hospital section. You could use the AI art generator to see, you know, 
pictures of a hospital as if it was done by Francis Bacon and use that as a jumping off point to sort of see, okay, that's how this style we're taking inspiration from applies to this setting and we can sort of work off of that. It's about getting text and adding to it, not just printing it. Okay, so what's the problem? Why is everyone on Twitter mad at my anime giant booby AI art lady? Problem is that some people are not using this as a tool. They are just adjusting their prompts a million times and refreshing a million times until they still get something decent and then saying that that is their artwork. An AI generated painting won an art show and people were getting worried about this technology unseating the jobs of actual human artists. I actually want to talk about the first time I heard this actual specific discourse because it was the reason that made me want to eventually make this video I'm doing right now. So the Create Unknown is a podcast that I assume does other things, but they have Zach Hale on sometimes and I watch it then. Why is it blurry? Okay. Zach Hale, also known as Psychic Pebbles, previously known as Psychic Pebble, uh, is someone I respect a lot. You know, I was a Newgrounds kid, I've listened to every Sleepy Cast like a million times, I'm a big fan of Smiling Friends, uh, Pim is my little guy, and if you mess with him, I will fucking get you. But in one of the most recent podcasts, they were talking about AI art generation, and Zach was talking about how in the future there could be, you know, a movie you go see that's been pinpointed by AI so perfectly that it will be the funniest thing in the world to you, or the scariest, or saddest, or whatever. And that we could basically just get to a point where there's no people involved in the process at all and it's just AI pinpointing the exact buttons on your brain that like make it go burr. And I have never had such like a, a visceral negative gut reaction to something said by someone I really respect a lot. That I, I just wanted to like reach through the fucking screen and just just grab him. <laughs> because AI on its own can't make actual art. It can make images and sounds and shit, but there's no human grounding. Alright, so of course we gotta do this shit. What is art? There's a lot of answers to that question. For me, I think it's pretty easily boiled down to three things. It is conscious communication through a medium. To be a conscious force, you have to be trying to communicate some kind of thought, doesn't have to be complicated, and has to go through some kind of vehicle. A kid drawing a happy family with crayons. Art. Organizing your room in a certain way, which pleases you. Art. A magic player having certain ratios in their magic deck for the sake of aesthetics and the, at, even at the cost of utility. That's art. At some point I will be doing a video about like, coolness and style. And like how that sort of is a form of art that can come up in sport and game, but we'll do that another time. Animals are known to create art when we give them stuff or they find stuff to do it with. Does that make you know, those little drawings art. Thing is, we can't actually know if it is, because we can't really have them tell us intent. I think the only one you can really for sure say classifies is uh, like when monkeys or orangutans, when they do art, they're pretty close to us. And you know, if we can teach them like sign language or whatever, that's like, you can kind of justify that. Uh, I will say though that during a bit of research, I found this picture of a bunny named Binny. Uh, in front of some paintings he did, um, and I'll happily contradict myself and say that Binny is, is an, an, in fact an artist. Art breaks its own rules sometimes, what can I say? The, the problem with the AI generated art though is that there's no consciousness on the other side of it, you know. It can't have intent when the only thing it's trying to do is build that median Lego sculpture with the bricks that we gave it based off of other sculptures that we made. Um, I can give a personal example here. Um, this summer I made a little game called Parasocial in order to learn RenPy and to uh, learn a little bit of code. So here's one of the characters from the game. This is Cameron. Um, now an AI could absolutely create this image. You know, coralish red hair, blue arm tattoos, white tank top with sun wearing sunglasses. It might even uh, pick up on that tiny mark on their left eye. But what it can't do is it can't tell you that this character uh, was originally used as a mascot when I did Yu-Gi-Oh content and was originally drawn in a shitty traced panty and stocking style because I didn't know how to fucking draw. And it couldn't tell you that the reason that there's a mark on Cameron's eyes because I have a mark on my uh, the side of my right eye 
that I got in the summer of 2020 when I was working in a garage and got chemicals uh, spill on the side of my eye. I went over my safety glasses and there's a permanent discolored mark there. People will say a million monkeys chomping away on typewriters will eventually write the works of Shakespeare. And yeah, that could happen, but the monkeys could not tell you why Shakespeare wrote the way he did. Only the bard could do that. If you just have text, but that's it, you're not doing art. You're showing someone art. Either you're performing it exactly as it is, or you're literally just showing them, like, look, art. Um, to further illustrate this, we need to talk about Ben Shapiro and anime. So Ben Shapiro is a sad, sad little man. Ben Shapiro is the most queer-coded straight guy. Ben Shapiro is the only man to look worse in a beard. He is proficient at debating children, he doesn't know how sex works, and just constantly tells on himself and does very embarrassing things. In a just world, someone would have just shoved him in a locker and we all would have just moved on with our lives, but is not a just world and here we are. So while I'm sure you've heard of this man from either his content or content from other people debunking his content, you might not know, or you might know, uh, that he is a musician. He plays violin. Um, I believe he's classically trained. His father did as well. Um, and he's very good at, you know, making the violin make the correct notes. It's so uh, mechanical. He wasn't yeah. like... That's what I meant, the way he finishes yeah. notes, it's just very abrupt, very dry and cut. He is proficient, he's highly skilled. It would You'd just be lying if you were to say, oh, he's bad at violin. It's not true, he's good. Thing is though, and this is the difference, um, Ben could not make you cry because he's simply reading the text back. Due to his restrictive conservative ideology, the elitist art ideals, rap isn't music, you know, he's unable to affect what he's showing us. This is why conservatives suck shit at making art. It's also why they're bad at comedy, it's, which is also art. The saddest thing though, is you can see that somewhere in that five foot six frame, there is a soul. There's a spark that he's pushing down. He did this cute little Thanksgiving uh, cooking video once and you could see like he's being cordial. Like there's a light behind his eyes. Like he he's in there. Uh, there's this classic photo of young Ben uh, studying the blade here. A lot of people love to dunk on him for this, um, but honestly, like, I'm gonna be real, I'm down with this. Like, <laughs> fuck it, dude, he's, he's serving here, I love this for him. He looks like one of the neo-goths, like, dancing under the bridge from that famous video. Like, th this fucks absolutely, I'm, I know it, it sounds like I'm joking, I'm not, this fucking rules. <sighs> I just, I wish so hard with all my heart that Ben would have just stuck with that you know, and rode that edgy wave. Maybe right now he'd be like starring in cyberpunk shit. That would be dope. But you know, instead he's just gonna continue to choke out that light and continue to be the little Jewish boy who is the figurehead and mouthpiece for all of his evangelical Christian benefactors. And once he has done all his work and he's no longer useful, they will throw him into the thresher with the rest of us. In 2014, A1 Pictures put out an anime adaptation of the manga Your Lie in April, and every single episode made me cry. Oh yeah, spoiler warning for Your Lie in April, the entire thing. It's at 10, go watch it. 3, 2, 1. So the story is about this kid, Kosei, who is a child prodigy piano player, um, but he's only playing because of his sick mom and to win competitions. His mom is abusive and is dying during this whole time and then eventually dies, and he, uh, doesn't play piano anymore. He can't hear the notes anymore. His brain is like broken that part of him. So his life is very bleak. He doesn't touch the piano for years until one day um, he randomly meets a girl his age who's a violinist, Kaori. Um, she plays wildly, not according to what would do well in a competition, um, but what she wants to express from her heart. She is a true artist. And with her help, she's able to kind of rehabilitate Kosei until he can hear the notes again most of the time. You know, they enter some competitions together and try to rise up the ranks a bit. Um, and ultimately, in a, in a grand showing, in a moment of passion, they shirk the rules and scoring system and they add to the text and they give this incredible show, losing the competition but getting a standing ovation from the audience. They won because they did art, and they didn't just stick to the elitist paint-by-numbers competition standards. They interpreted the text and changed it, and they wrote their own text. 
And of course, at the end, you find out Kaori was deathly ill this entire time, and she passes away. So, the whole time, she knew that nothing was going to come from her art. Like, it wouldn't matter if she won all these competitions and made a bunch of money, because she's about to fucking die. Kaori was a true artist, because she played just to create something beautiful and to inspire others. She inspires Kosei and other people to play music. I'm regretting that I'm going to have to edit this part later because I'm going to have to go through the footage and it's going to make me cry again. Sorry, future gen. See, AI art will never supersede actual human art because humanization is so vital to it. People aren't math. We're very vibes-based and we don't really make logical sense most of the time. There's not a reason that I like the cartoony-ass like Zelda chickens so much. I just do, and I want them in everything. And AI doesn't really understand. I like this because I do. You know, this is the reason that if you want to make a beat in like a music program, if you just throw a loop on, it doesn't sound good. In music production, uh, there's a process called quantizing, which is basically if you go through and just loosely hit a bunch of notes for like a beat or piano or whatever, um, you can hit quantize, and it sort of like puts it to the next notch on like, you know, the measures. And it basically just like, tightly cleans up, you know, algorithm algorithmically what you just did. So it can be useful sometimes, obviously, um, but it takes out a bit of a human element. And there's there's tons of things in music production, like velocity, humanization, that basically are taking what you're doing and making it sound less perfect in order to sound right. If you ever wondered why uh, Nujabis, uh, rest in peace, why his beats are so fucking good, it's because he didn't quantize at all. He just like by hand placed all of his beats and he did it until it was like, okay, that's perfect for what I had in my head. AI is a tool, something we can use to help make art, but it can't be art itself, you know. Of course, this stuff's only gonna get more advanced and, you know, greedy corporations, see all of them, um, are going to try to replace people where they can with stuff like this um, to cut costs. Uh, and it's gonna make art worse. I mean, you know, design by committee is basically the same thing, just a more caveman version of it. And eventually, maybe they're going to be able to AI generate YouTube videos, you know? Who knows? Maybe you could generate this video. Type in, let's see, Adidas hat, track pants, uh, gray hoodie, gay. Uh, I'm sure they will suck anyways, though. Um, for my final point, though, I would like to give an example of what the AI can produce uh, when the internet's down. Here it is.